What's up, fam? Welcome to the week. Happy Monday. I hope it started off good for you. I feel like we do have a nice week ahead of us. Um, my Monday was definitely better than my Sunday. Um, it was a just a happy-go-lucky day. I had a nice shift at work. Very gentle-paced evening. Lots of like high-value, low-maintenance tables, which is always good. Can never complain about that. Um, but yeah, I can't think of anything insane that happened today. Like I didn't discover that my shirt was open as I was like crossing the street. I didn't conjure any burgers or anything today. So it's been pretty low key, pretty chill, but I do feel very excited about our anchor card for the week. And when I say anchor card, what I mean is, so on Instagram, I pull a card Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the collective. And I write up a, um, a thing around that and it's, you know, kind of like it builds through the week and it lasts all week, but each card is like the most concentrated for those couple of days. So the first card for the week, the anchor card on Monday sets the tone for the rest of the week. And that's sort of like the underlying theme that everything builds upon and plays out and like blooms from, from there. And so our anchor energy this week is the magician, which I'm really excited about because the magician has everything that they need to do what they want to do. They're unstoppable. They have everything it takes. They have the, the resources, the time, the know-how, all of the things within them. It's like in the exterior 3D world, they have everything that they need. Even if you think that you're like missing something, like it's hiding, you have it, or somebody that you know has that thing that you need. Um, you just need to set the intention that someone is going to bring forth the missing pieces. But everything is around you. All the resources that you need are there. Um, <clears throat> on an intrinsic level, the magician has everything they need on the inside. They have the clarity, the intention, the imagination. They have the creativity. They have the resourcefulness. They have the um, determination, the stamina. Uh, the, the moxie essentially, like they won't be stopped. They won't take no for an answer. And they have balanced the governing forces within themselves, um, and their discipline of self mastery so that they're, you know, they're harmonious and they're resonant and they're kind of in line and in flow with the cosmos. Um, if you're not fighting a bat an inner battle, then the rest of your life on the outside starts to harmonize and become super peaceful and super easy. And it, it just, you know, becomes like a flow that you can surrender into and just sort of like ride the wave. So that's where we're headed this week. And just some of the symbolism on the magician card, they always depict the magician having um, all of the elements present. So they have the fire of the wands, the earth of the pentacles, um, the air of the swords and the, and the, um, water of the cups and so this is like you the wands are your um your sense of spirit and industry and your sense of self and your um self-esteem and your self-worth and your confidence and your and your go-getterness this is like your passion this is your drive this is also like sex drive too uh, the cups, the water element, those are your relationships, your emotions, your feelings, um, creativity, dreams, intuitive um, hits and hunches, and your ability to be empathic and compassionate. The swords are about ideas and attention to detail and communication and clarity and um, decisiveness and balance and, and ruling um, with leadership, but also, um, you know, strength and, um, but um, hopefully not oppressive strength. Okay, so those are some of the themes of swords. And then pentacles is our earthly day-to-day -day 3D world, our comings and goings in our household and in our work and our family and just the, the housekeeping things, how we take care of ourselves, our bodies, our environment, how we keep our houses. And then, so the infinity symbol um, is above the magician. And, and I feel that Lately, I've been really grasping and expanding on this idea that eternity, you know, we always think of it as like a time thing, like, um, oh, it's forever and ever and ever. But to me, eternal is like perpetually unchanging. Um, to be eternal, like divine, 
to me means um, I can be eternal right now if I am unchanged by my outer circumstances, if I'm not reactive, if I am kind to my coworkers, even if they're shits that day and, you know, act like an ass if I give, forgive my uh, family member, you know, who was a, kind of a, a meanie to me yesterday, um, you know, and be kind regardless. Now I did set a boundary. I was kind. I wasn't like, I didn't, I wasn't a brat and throw a fit. I just didn't go break bread afterwards. So that's, you know, a good example of being eternal. It's like you be, you're consistent. It's like, um, unconditional love, right? Uh, the love is just there and it sustains and it doesn't matter what the conditions are around it. It's just like the sun. The sun is about as eternal as we can get in our solar system as far as what the way we experience it within a human lifetime, right? So even though eventually it'll burn out and all that stuff, and we'll yada yada, like details, details, science, technicalities, but that's why I say it's the closest we can get in this solar system from like what we can put our eyes on as something example that, uh, as an example that we can see that would be eternal. It's, it's perpetual. It's always shining and radiating. Um, another thing that's significant is that she has her right hand holding her wand. The right hand is the active hand that casts, that gives, that directs energy. That's the, the right side of the body. That's the masculine side. And then her left hand side is pointed down to the ground. And so the left side receives and the left side is the feminine and the vessel. And so the reason why she has this pose, the holding up like an antenna and pointing down to the ground is because the magician is, the pitfalls of the magician is to cling to, the, to your own will um, more than you trust the will of divine. See, the will of divine could actually align with exactly what you want. Um, but sometimes the divine will has something that's going to be even more fulfilling and satisfying for you. So the magician, when the magician is sort of reversed or like in the darker side of the shadow, it's like you're forcing your own will on the world and, and you're clinging to it and you're determined even if um, it's not in your highest good. But the magician in the right way is an open channel for the light to be channeled through and magic and miracles can, can happen through you. And sometimes that means that you get exactly what you ask for. It happens to me all the time. And sometimes it means that you get better what you ask for. That happens to me all the time too. Every now and then though, when that better thing comes at first, it looks like it sucks and it's terrible. But if you trust, you have certainty that it's all playing out in your favor. I'm telling you, it usually does. Um, it doesn't mean that this life is without pain or without discomfort or without scariness or fear or, you know, real threats, but it's, it's all an illusion in the end anyway. So the real threat, I mean, there's not really that. It's like, I mean, the worst threat is that we'll die. And the worst case scenario is that we just like go into nothingness and that's it. And we don't, we're not conscious anymore. And the best case scenario is that there's another life after this or we're, you know, reincarnated and we do this all again. So either way, it doesn't really matter. We won't know the difference or we'll be fine. So that's how I think of it. But yeah, so the magician has governed the, or balanced the governing forces within, and they are now able to have an idea, get inspired, build on that idea, get a real visualization about it, get clear on it, and then speak it. Speak it into being with those magic words, and then everything starts going into motion and steps start being taken by the magician, and then the universe does its thing, and it meets it halfway, and... It just all happens in like a cooperative co-creation, uh, a, a cooperative attempt at co-creation uh, and you, you make it to make your good works happen together as a, as a team. Sorry, I'm like running out of steam for my brain juice for the evening. I can't talk anymore. Oh, speaking of talking, the magician is also associated with Mercury. It's all about communication and writing and media and things to do with tech. And when I think of like Mercury, I think of 
Well, I mean, there's travel involved too, but yeah, talking, writing, filming, um, all the things, get, grabbing audio, creating um, things that put a message out into the world. Uh, you might be having a conversation with someone this week. There's an Aries new moon on April 1st, which is, there's a lot of like really cool significance to this Aries new moon. I was just thinking about it today and I, I, I was like, I need to check to see what day it's actually on. Cause there's already, I'm already getting like hits on like associative things to do with like when, when it's actually happening and it's pretty interesting. So I'm going to confirm when it's actually happening, but it's pretty cool. But yeah, so maybe, um, communication, maybe you need to, um, have a talk or send some correspondence out or maybe if you were going to reach out to some some company that you want to work for an opportunity that you were going to maybe like send out a cold call or invite somebody to um, collaborate or something like that this might be a good week to do that um the magician card is also associated with so on the tree of life all of these governing forces are laid out in a map of reality that also corresponds to the map of the human soul. Um, it's like a double whammy. And so the paths in between these chunks of governing forces are like the journey of the soul and like the lessons that we have to learn. It's like the hero's journey. And so the path are associated with the major arcana cards. So the paths of Kabbalah are also related to the major arcana cards in the tarot. And so the corresponding um, path to the magician, according to Eileen Conley's interpretation of the tarot, is Bet, the Hebrew word Bet, or Beth, which means house. Interesting, I live on Beth Drive, and my name is Elizabeth, and my address has a 19 in it, and my birthday is April 19th. So when I found this place, like, I was literally taking a shower, and I would, as I was getting out of the shower, I heard a voice say, check on Craigslist. And I was like, oh, we've already looked. And it was like, check on Cra Craigslist. And I, we looked at Craigslist and this place was up and I had um, actually dated a guy before that lived a couple of houses down and he was in a similar like townhouse as mine and I was like oh those are nice places like we've got to go get it and so that's how I got this house on Beth uh, but yeah so an interesting coincidence uh, it's just one of those kismet things that like really worked out and we just showed up and all these other people were looking for the hat like looking at this house and we had a check ready to go um that was back years ago and I've, I've loved this little place ever since it's right by the forest but okay neither here nor there the magician also associated with the path of beth which means in hebrew house and the lessons associated with beth have to do with a um a desire for form and structure and so Basically, that's what the magician does. The magician takes all that potential, all of that unadulterated, unfiltered, raw potential that could have been chaos, but the magician knows how to alchemize this through their discipline of self-mastery and channel it into their, their intentions and into their manifestations. And so, yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a really good week. And I thought we would pull a follow-up card uh, from the uh, Magical Unicorns Oracle deck, just to see, I don't know if there's anything else I need to know about. What do we need to know about our being magician? What would be helpful, helpful follow-up hint? Share, when you share, everyone feels happy. <laughs> share so maybe share um share everything share the load share the work share the um share your thoughts share communication correspondence share fun times uh yeah make it a sharing week sharing is caring but also um in kabbalah we learn that in order to build the vessel part of the practice of restriction is to go against the um the desire to see receive for the self alone part of it is going against the need um, and desire to reach for like self gratification or um, a numbing agent or to react to a situation immediately to um, alleviate any discomfort and fix everything perfectly instead of just like sitting with it and like really like figuring out what needs to happen. But um, one of the other ways to build the vessel is to um, 
yeah, to do, to uh, go against receiving for the self alone. So go against your selfish nature. It's not bad to receive and it's not bad to want for yourself, but there's an elevated um, essence of wanting, like if I want to go to sleep just because I'm tired and I just need my beauty rest, then that's fine, it's good for me. But if I also wanna go to sleep because man, I'm tired, I need my beauty rest, but also I wanna feel good at work tomorrow, I wanna be in a good mood, I wanna be a good coworker, a good teammate, I wanna like make good videos tomorrow night after work, that's a whole other story, right? Like you're starting to think beyond just yourself. So, I don't know, just consider, consider others. If you have a chance to share in a fun way this week, share, share your thoughts, share your feelings, share whatever. This guy's sharing his apple with a horse. Not a horse, it's a unicorn. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, I am going to heat up some dinner and watch something briefly and chug a bunch of water because I'm dehydrated and go to bed soon. All right. Nighty night, sleep tight. Or if it's the middle of the day for you tomorrow, bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Peace.